What do we make of this suddenly buoyant market? Look, I know it's tuned out the constant drumbeat of negativity. But that might be precisely the reason why stocks can bottom. In fact, there's a good chance maybe they already bottom. But before you dismiss me as some sort of wide-eyed optimist who doesn't know what he's talking about, let me be very clear. I'm not the one calling a bottom here. Wouldn't surprise me, though, if a bottom has arrived. That said, in turbulent markets, I'm always warning you to take your emotions out of the equation. You simply can't trust your gut in moments of extreme fear or extreme euphoria. How, how so pleasure. That's why so many people missed the peak last November, even though the Federal Reserve more or less declared war on high stock prices. I mean, Jay Powell practically sent you an engraved invitation to a bear market. In recent weeks, though, I've been wondering if maybe we've gone too far in the other direction. Don't get me wrong, stocks deserve to get hammered over the last eight months. But even when the Fed's tightening and there's a destabilizing war in Eastern Europe and the second largest economy in the world, China, keeps shutting down, major, you know, closing major cities, you got to remember that stocks do get cheaper as they go lower, as opposed to maybe crypto or maybe call options. Sooner or later, all the bad news is baked into the market, and everybody who is going to sell is already sold. And that is the moment when stocks bottom. Not when we start getting on prey to good news, but when we've gotten so used to negativity that it just doesn't move the needle anymore. That's the point at the top of the show. So we got to ask, has that happened already? Tonight, we're going off the charts with the help of Larry Williams. Yes, the legendary technician slash market historian who's been doing this thing before I could even drive, and I drove plenty early. Now, Larry's written more than a dozen books, and he's created a host of his own proprietary indicators, all of which you can find on his website, IReallyTrade.com. More importantly, he's got a tremendous track record. Now, I've talked about the fact that he's been calling bottoms where practically everyone else has thrown in the towel. I mean, for instance, the classic one way back in April 2020, we said oh, we thought that's, and we all thought the sky was falling from COVID. We thought it could cause a depression. Williams predicted the economy would quickly rebound, allowing stocks to come roaring back, and that is exactly what happened. Now, a week ago, Larry told us it was time to go all in, time to get bullish again. Anticipation of a rally that could last through late August. He figured that we were due for at least an intermediate-term bottom because the hedge fund complex had simply gotten too negative. At the same time, he pointed to the futures market data that showed commercial hedgers had gotten increasingly positive. Now, historically, this is important. When commercial hedgers and hedge funds are betting on opposite sides of the trade, you want to stick with the commercials who were bullish. After that, we got one last leg lower, which he wanted you to buy into. Good call. And the market quickly started boring last Friday. Well, that rally got interrupted yesterday, which he still wanted you to buy, but that was because everybody was freaked out about some chatter that Apple plans to slow down its hiring. We got back on track today with that monster 754-point Dow rally. And as William sees it, it might just be at the beginning. Why? First, take a look at this weekly chart of the S&P futures going back to late 2018. Remember how I said Larry's got all sorts of homebrewed metrics? The line at the bottom is his proprietary Williams panic indicator. This thing is exactly what it sounds like. Why do we care about panic? Because markets don't bottom until investors capitulate. And the Williams panic indicator does a pretty darn good job of showing you when people are throwing in the towel. When you get this kind of mass selling, the Williams panic indicator will throw off a buy signal. And historically, that's been a very good time to pull the trigger. Remember, I always say panic is not a strategy, but maybe it's a buy strategy. The panic indicator told you to buy in late 2018, right as the market bottomed in the wake of the Fed's overzealous rate hikes. I also told you to buy in March of 2020, when all sorts of institutional money managers were still terrified of the entire asset class. Wow, what a tremendous entry that was, right? Most importantly, the Williams panic indicator flashed a buy signal a month ago, June 17th. This is something that's only happened 18 times in the last 90 years. 18 times. And almost every time you had to pounce. I like those odds. So we've got capitulation. But capitulation alone isn't enough. You also need something that can turn things around. And right now, Williams thinks we've got time on our side. Specifically, he says we've got a fabulous historical pattern of time on our side. Check out the daily chart of the Dow Industrial Average. Okay, so far you're with me. The blue line in the bottom shows how the Dow's average performance in years that end in two. So 2012, 2002, 1992, and so on, going all the way back to 1922. Now, this is what technicians actually call the decennial pattern. The blue line shows you the path the Dow took in 
in years that ended in two. And historically, those years started off weak before finishing very strong. Sound familiar? Now, you may think it is crazy to work something like this into your investing calculus. I mean, honestly, who cares if it's a year that ends in two? I mean, does 2022 really have anything else in common with 2012 or 2002 or 1992 to say nothing of 1920-22? To which I'd say, well, you're absolutely right. There is no logical reason why this decennial pattern should be a good way to predict the, tra the trajectory of the stock market. However, in the past, it's had a surprising amount of predictive power for whatever reason. Maybe it's something we can't grasp. If you still don't buy this, think of it like this. We know that there are a ton of chart-driven traders who care about this stuff, even if you don't. And now they've got one more reason to be bullish, and they will take action even if you think they should. Speaking of extremely long-term patterns, Williams points out there's also a 20-year cycle going all the way back to 1880. We've been through this cycle six times before. And at this point in each of those cycles, we got a bull market. If the 20-year cycle holds, Williams says we could have a nice run over the next few years. So take a look at the, at the Dow in the early to mid-1940s. You got a terrific rally from late 1942 to early 1946. But maybe that's a bad example. Extraordinary times. What about the next iteration of the cycle in the early to mid-1960s? Same thing, a powerful run from mid-1962 through 1966. And I could go on. We got the same trajectory in the early to mid-80s. And then, again, 20-odd years ago. Is there any reason why this 20-year pattern should repeat itself again? Look, I'm not, I'm not omniscient. But Larry points out that you're five for five. Five, if you bet on this cycle, if you initial run in the, in the 1880s. Here's the bottom line. The charts as interpreted by the legendary Larry Williams suggest that Wall Street has finally thrown in the towel and some powerful seasonal patterns are finally on the side of the bulls. I wouldn't be surprised if he's right again, meaning perhaps the bottom really is in. Joe in North Carolina. Joe. Hey, Jim. Big booyah from Wilmington, North Carolina. How are you? Well, I'm um, good. Thank you for calling in, Joe. What's going on? Well, thank you. Huge congrats on your new digs at the NYSE. Uh, it was great to see your wife and you yesterday during the opening day. Oh, thank you. My, you're very kind. You're meant to be together, you can tell. So <laughs> uh, you're very blessed. Uh, question oh, yeah. about Square, now known as Block. You talked about it a couple of weeks ago. Recent analysts have, have cut price targets. Um, like you, I don't believe in a doomsday scenario, but I think we are heading to recession. So Cash App has exposure there, but also the company's exposure to Bitcoin. Right. I think there's a better entry point. Um, I know it had a little bit of a run with this recent rally. I missed it, but I'm looking long term. But okay. I think there's better opportunities. What do you think? Well, look, I think that the actual this market's headed up a little bit and stocks like Square, which are very overvalued on earnings, are going to do OK. Um, but you know what? There's so many other stocks that are doing well. Uh, and I think you're right. The square has issues in recession. So I'd be careful. I'd be careful about this one. How about Thomas, my home state of New Jersey? Thomas. Hi, Jim. How are you? Oh, yeah. Hi. Oh, yeah. What's going on? Well, Jim, my question is about the stock Peloton. I heard that the stock went all the way to $30, in fact, for 31 and gone down to 9 I want to know what's the future. Well, this is a tough one. I happen to like Barry McCarthy, the CEO, very, very much. But at the same time, let's wait till the stock bottoms before we take a shot at it. Because it is a shot, believe me. Tonight's chartist, Larry Williams, suggests that Wall Street has finally thrown in the towel and some very powerful seasonal patterns are finally on the side of the bulls, not the bears. Much more ahead, including my exclusive with IBM. Sinking after earnings, does Big Blue have big plans to combat the bears? I'm checking in with the top brass. Then I believe in this market, but there is one frustrating aspect that I find absolutely undying, and I'll reveal what it is. And of course, all your calls rapid fire in tonight's edition of The Lightning Round. So stay with Kramer.